the American Institute of Steel Construction, or AISC, Specification 360, requires in Chapter C that all steel structures be designed for stability. Specifically, they allow the use of the direct analysis method by following Chapter C sections C2 and C3 requirements. Let's look at how visual analysis does that. The first thing to do is to make sure that when you're in the project manager defining your structure that the analysis static method be set to AISC direct. That will tell visual analysis that all of the requirements of sections C2 and C3 be set. So what are those requirements? Well, first off, AISC requires that second order effects involving P little delta and big delta be included in the analysis. Visual analysis has the ability to do P delta analysis and those effects are turned on for the AISC direct method. In addition, AISC requires that structural imperfections be considered in the analysis. One way to do that is to use what are called notional loads. Visual analysis, as we will see, will actually create notional loads for your structure and they will be applied to all elements in the structure. Notional loads are a fraction of gravity loads to be applied in the transverse direction of the structure. In this structure, our vertical or gravity direction is the y-axis, and the x and the z-axis then become the transverse directions. So for any load case, any loads that have a component in the y direction will be applied at a fractional level in the x and z directions as, as well. So the direct design method will involve creation of additional load cases with notional loads in them. In section C23, AISC requires a softening effect to be applied to your structural areas and moments of inertia. So all structural members then are softened by that factor per section C23. The final comment about the direct method is that the requirements of section C3 be applied, which can be summarized in using effective length factor K of 1 for all of the design quantities. So let's now look at our structure. We have a lateral load and a gravity load applied to the dead load only, that's our only load in this structure. If we go to the results view and drop down the result case combo, we're going to see that we have strength design cases here, the, the second, third, and fourth cases listed for um, load case combinations. If we go down a little farther, we see that for each one of those combinations, there's a single DAM case an NIX DAM and an NIZ DAM. What are those? The DAM case all by itself can just be thought of as the second order effects P delta only. The NIX DAM includes the second order effects plus applied notional loads, this time in the X transverse direction. And similarly, we have an NIZ DAM, which is, involves notional loads applied in the Z transverse direction. So that involves three additional load case per factored strength design case that you have. If we now go to the design view, and let's look at our columns for a moment, and we're seeing they have a very low unity value here of about 0.33. If we double click on a column, we can get the design report. And when we do that and look under the combined check cases for effective length factors, we're seeing KZ and KY both being one. So we're seeing the effects of section C3 where the effective length factor is set equal to one. So in summary then, if we go to the model view and, and set our structure static analysis method to AIC direct, the requirements in Chapter C2 of AISC Specification 360 will get applied.